The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hmm, I want to solder this circuit. I wonder if I should be worried about the toxic smoke and fumes from this flux and molten metal. They're not very good for my lungs. Oh well, I'm sure it'll be fine. Pretty terrible idea. Maybe I should make a fan to make the fumes go away. Let's talk about what we need to make our own desktop fan to keep those nasty solder fumes out of our faces. Thing one, we need a fan. You can buy these new or a lot of times you can salvage them out of old desktop computers. You want to make sure that your fan is a DC fan, not an AC fan, for this to work with the way we're going to be building our circuit today. So the fans you might salvage could have two wires or three wires. For this, we really only need the black and red wire, so if it has a third wire, you can just trim it off right at the fan. The next thing you want to look at is the voltage rating of your fan. This one says DC 12 volts on it, but it actually has a voltage rating of 4.5 to 13.8 volts DC. This information can be found on the data sheet. Now, what's nice about the voltage range is this fan will turn on as long as it's supplied a minimum of 4.5 volts. So I will show you how to power this fan using either a nine volt battery or a 12 volt AC to DC power supply. To turn my fan off, I don't wanna have to always disconnect the battery or unplug it from the wall. So I'm gonna add a power switch and I wanna know when it's on, so I'm gonna add a red LED as an indicator light. Since the LED is rated for about two volts, less than our supply voltage, we'll have to add a resistor. Now, we're talking about using both a nine volt battery and a 12 volt power supply. So let's talk about how to find the resistance value we'll need for either supply. To find resistance, we can use the equation found in Ohm's law. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. Let's start with our nine volt battery. We have nine volts and our LED wants approximately two volts. So that's a difference of seven volts. We wanna divide that by the desired amperage of the LED. So that's seven divided by 0.02 amps. That equals 350. So we're gonna want a resistor close to or exactly 350 ohms. Well, I don't have any 350 ohm resistors, so I'm gonna grab the closest value I have, which is 330 ohms. Our AC to DC power supply gives us 12 volts. So taking that and the two volts for our LED, that's a difference of 10 volts divided by the 0.02 amps, that's 500 ohms. Now the closest LED I have is very close and it'll be perfect, 499 ohms. So this is the resistor we will use for the 12 volt circuit. The resistor is gonna go in line with the LED. The fan that I chose has a voltage rating of equal to or higher than our power supply, so we don't need to add any resistors for the fan. I also wanna be able to control the speed of my fan. This would normally be done with a 555 timer or another chip using PWM, but instead I'm gonna use a potentiometer. It's not the most efficient way to build the circuit, but it works. If I put the LED indicator in series with the fan and the potentiometer, it will also be supplied a varying voltage, which would cause it to burn out. We obviously don't want that, so here's what we're gonna do instead. We'll use a double pole, double throw switch, which will put the fan and the LED in parallel. The switch will be supplied the nine or 12 volts on both poles. The resistor and LED are in one circuit, while the potentiometer and motor are in another, both placed after the switch. This way, when the switch is turned on, both circuits are supplied the nine or 12 volts. It's time to solder our circuit. First things first, safety glasses. Okay, when laying out your circuit, you often wanna start with the largest components because they take up the most space. So we're gonna start with our potentiometer. Now, we also wanna make sure that we can access our potentiometer for when we want to use it. So we're going to put it at the edge of our perf board right here. Next, we're gonna add the switch. Now I'm gonna place it right behind the potentiometer to give it some physical reinforcement. Now, I probably should have chosen a switch with pins designed to actually fit perf board, but 
I like big switches, so I chose a panel mount switch. So to make it work, I'm going to solder on some pins, and then those pins can be soldered onto the perf board. Okay, so the top pins of our switch, the ones that are closest to the edge of our bar board, aren't really being used, so I bent them over and soldered them down just for stability, and I soldered to an extra pad to add extra stability. The bottom two pins are gonna end up getting bent over on each other and connected later. So the middle pins are the ones we have to concern ourselves with. So the pin on the side closest to the potentiometer in the middle of the switch, I'm gonna bend over and connect to the top pin of the potentiometer. The other center pin is gonna end up getting bent over and connected to the resistor and LED. So I have my resistor connected to the center pin of the switch and now I'm gonna add my LED and I want the positive lead closest to the resistor and I'm gonna put the negative on the outer row. So I'm gonna fold this lead towards the resistor. Fold that down because we're gonna want that there later. All right, let's solder this up. Not all LEDs are the same. This one is rated for 2.1 volts, but even another red LED could be rated a little bit different. So make sure you check the voltage rating of the LED you choose, especially if you choose a different color, and make sure you adjust your resistance accordingly. Now it's time to add our power input. So if you're using a nine volt battery and snap, uh, you can either wire the snap directly to the board, you would want the black wire going to the same row as the negative lead of the LED, and then the red one can go next to it, uh, farther in on the board. Or you can do my crazy thing and add the header pins, which same thing, you want them perpendicular to the edge of the board, like that. And then this would go on the end of your battery snap, like this. But I'm going AC power, so I'm gonna add my jack. Now, once again, my jack has terminal posts a little bit too big, so I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife to make my holes a little bit bigger to make them fit. You could also use a drill bit. This is the black terminal of the jack. It's gonna connect to the negative lead of the LED here. This jack terminal is just extra, and it's gonna be used for stability. This is the red terminal of the jack, and we're gonna use an extra lead to connect it to the bottom two terminals of the switch. The last thing to add to the circuit is the fan. Here I've marked on the board where the header pin is going to go. If you look on the back, we're going to connect the black pin over here to the ground plane connecting to the power jack, and the red pin is gonna go all the way up to the middle pin of the potentiometer. This bottom pin of the potentiometer is just folded over and soldered for stability as it's not really connected to anything. Okay, let's plug it in and see if it works. Oh yeah, let's turn it down a little bit. Oh, how about turn it back up? Yeah, oh, turn it down, turn it up, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna have this so that the intake is blowing the fumes away from me. So I'm gonna add the guard to the intake side to block that, protect my fingers in case it gets too close to my circuit that I'm soldering. 
Also, solder fumes can be kind of nasty, so rather than just spitting it back out into the room and having that nasty air around you, you can get an air filter and cut it down and put it on the front of your fan to help filter out some of that nastiness so it's not recirculating back into your room. Let's do that. All right, let's see this thing in action. Oh look, I'm soldering a circuit. Oh, goodbye fumes. Ho ha ha ha, suck them away. Yeah, that's pretty good. And oh look, oh no, I got too close to it and my fingers aren't being hit. All right, I would call that a success. Well, thanks for making the fume away fan with me today. Do you have ideas for a better solution to get those nasty solder fumes out of your face? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Thank you.